So Minister Schweitzer will give a brief statement and then we'll take your questions. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being here today. I'm pleased to announce that this morning, the Lieutenant Governor signed an order in council to refer a question to the Alberta Court of Appeal challenging the constitutional validity of the federal government's threat to impose a carbon tax on Albertans. With this action, we are standing up for Albertans and our commitment to create jobs, growth, and economic diversification. As you are aware, our government kept its promise and our first piece of legislation repealed the provincial carbon tax in favor of our plan to introduce a levy on industrial emitters. The federal government has recently announced that it will impose a carbon tax on Albertans starting January 1, 2020. Our government contends this constitutes federal overreach into our exclusive provincial jurisdiction to manage our own affairs in a way that is suitable to local conditions. I'd like to take a moment to discuss the substance of our government's legal challenge of the constitutionality of the federal government's imposition of a carbon tax on Albertans. Our government has been clear. We'll use every legal tool at our disposal to fight the federal carbon tax and uphold the promise we made to Albertans. Our government will continue to support other provinces' challenges against this federal tax grab. We have a coalition of allies with three other provinces who are also taking action against the constitutionality of the imposition of a federal carbon tax. However, it is important that the government of Alberta is able to provide comprehensive evidence to our Court of Appeal that is within our constitutional right to manage our affairs in a manner that is consistent with our own circumstances. And that includes the regulation of greenhouse gas emissions. At the Court's discretion, we'll be providing our government's full arguments and we'll present the Court with a full evidentiary record that defends our right to make policy best suited to the needs of our province. I'd like to provide a brief summary of some of the arguments Alberta will make to protect our and every province's rights under the Canadian Constitution. Imposing a federal carbon tax on Albertans constitutes federal interference with our constitutional authority to make policy decisions within our own jurisdiction. But our constitutional reference has implications beyond the carbon tax that every Canadian should be concerned about. The federal government's previous arguments represent an unprecedented federal overreach into provincial matters. By imposing a carbon tax on provinces, the federal government would be disrupting the balance of Canada's federation. Our federation is built on the idea that provincial governments have better legislative competence to adapt policy solutions that are better suited to their own local needs and circumstances. This includes Alberta's constitutional right to regulate matters within our own jurisdiction. Greenhouse gas emissions are produced primarily by entities and activities that fall exclusive within provincial jurisdiction. This includes emissions from local works and undertakings, natural resource development within the province, transportation, as well as a range of local activities from home heating to local agriculture. Let me be clear, provincial authority over these activities is undisputed as a matter of constitutional law. Through its imposition of a carbon tax, the federal government is forcing a one-size-fits-all program across the country. Regardless of, of the fact that a province like Alberta, whose economy relies heavily on resource extraction, cannot adopt a solution that works for a smaller province with little or no natural resource revenues. As I said previously, one of the underlying principles of our federation is the ability for diversity in policy choices across each province from coast to coast. And it is our belief that all provinces have the right to decide how they reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Our government recognizes that climate change is a real and important issue, and we are committed to working on a new greenhouse gas management plan, including a new technology innovation and emissions reductions regime. Provinces are perfectly capable of finding local solutions to address climate change without a heavy-handed intrusion of the federal government. In fact, over a decade, Alberta has been a leader in the multiple regulations in place to reduce greenhouse gases. Regardless of our government's repeal of the NDP carbon tax, these existing regulations and any future actions we take are policy choices 
made by our province to regulate and reduce greenhouse gases that are consistent with local circumstances. Alberta's government has a long and strong proud legacy of defending provincial interests. From Peter Lougheed to Ralph Klein, Albertans have been at the forefront of advancing provincial interests in Canada. We wouldn't have the Alberta we have today if it weren't for the commitment to ensuring our province received a fair deal in Confederation. Our government also made a commitment to Albertans. We will never be apologetic when defending our interests. We will never relent in promoting jobs. And we will never be passive when championing our economy. We will stand up for Albertans. And I look forward to defending Alberta's rights in court. Thank you. So the, the federal backstop doesn't kick in until after the election. Um, and Andrew Scheer just released his platform, says there will be no federally imposed carbon tax. So why file this challenge before the election? Right now, as we campaign, we are going to be making sure that we do everything within our uh, every tool available to Alberta to push back against this carbon tax, from supporting other provinces, from Saskatchewan to Manitoba to Ontario. Uh, we're going to be making sure we use every tool available to us. Uh, we obviously just uh, introduced and passed Bill 1, received royal assent uh, just recently. Uh, and just last week, uh, the federal government announced that it will be imposing a carbon tax on Alberta effective January 1st. We need to take action now to make sure we defend Alberta's interests. Can you explain the legalese around this? Because uh, I'm kind of an idiot. Um, <laughs> like with the turn off the SAPS legislation, BC was told, hey, this isn't even a thing right now. Like, get out of here until it's actually a thing. So, like, this hasn't actually happened. Like, so w is a court just going to tell you to get out of there until it's actually happening? Or. Can you explain a little bit about that? So the, the rationale right now, the federal government has announced that definitively the date that they're going to be proposing their backstop, uh, the federal tax. Uh, so right now is the exact right time for us to be launching this uh, this court challenge. I mean, like, why that? Or, I just don't understand, like, can you explain that a little bit? Like, a re I guess, like, a reference that you're making arguments against something that actually doesn't exist yet. It won't exist until January 1st. I just... There's, there's clear legislation that the federal government is seeking to impose uh, on Albertans, effective January 1, 2020. Uh, it's the right time right now for Alberta to stand up for ourselves and protect our provincial jurisdiction. This is an unprecedented overreach by our federal government into Alberta's uh, clear constitutional rights. We're going to be, we campaigned on this. We Albertans are expecting us to defend them in our, and stand up for this province in the future. We're going to make sure we do that, and this is the right time to launch this legal challenge. And I'm looking forward to our, our pursuing this matter. But is there any legal is there any legal precedence to this? Because that's exactly why BC didn't do it in the first place. Because until you've gone got, got law, and yeah, this is definitely definitely going to happen. Not just they've said it's going to happen. And the legal precedence doesn't seem to support the fact that you should be going to court now. No, well, we have actually consulted with our department, with external legal experts on this matter, uh, to define what was the right time. Uh, we've passed our Bill 1, which uh, we have had has received royal assent. In response, the federal government made their announcement regarding January 1, 2020, for their date of the backstop. So right now is the exact right time to start standing up for Alberta and get this into the courts. It also gives us an opportunity to put forward a full evidentiary record from Alberta into the court process to make sure that we can hopefully have this heard prior to any Supreme Court uh, hearings on the matter. Do you have a sense of how soon the Court of Appeal can hear this? I don't, it is up to the Court of Appeal to determine uh, their own timelines as to when materials need to be filed and when a hearing date would be. Uh, we're hopeful that they will do an expedited timeline. I think that the earliest date for a hearing would be sometime in October. Sorry, is that in Cal Stupid question, Calgary or Edmonton? Uh, I would defer to the Court of Appeal as to how, where they'd want to hold their panel. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the phones. Operator, can you put through the first caller, please? Our first question comes from Justin Yovetti at Globe and Mail. Your line is open. Justin? Justin, are you there? Operator, can you put through the next caller, please? Our next question comes from Tyler Dawson of the National Post. Your line is open. Yeah, so just a quick question about the federal jurisdiction thing versus provincial jurisdiction, because Saskatchewan tried to make that argument too, and the, and the Court of Appeals said it fell under POG powers, and so, so that part of it didn't work. So what makes you think that using that argument is going to work in Alberta? 
right now, uh, we obviously disagree with the decision that was provided in Saskatchewan. Uh, this is a gross overreach by the federal government into clear provincial jurisdiction. Uh, we're going to be making sure we stand up for Albertans. This is a, a key matter. We have a long precedented history in Alberta of standing up for provincial rights, for making sure that we fight for our province. Uh, we're going to restore this province's reputation as being a province that fights for provincial jurisdiction for all Canadians. Do you have a follow-up, Tyler? Yeah, I mean, that's not a legal argument, though. So what is the legal basis that you're making here in terms of how, how do you, what is the legal argument that you're planning to use that's going to overcome parliamentary peace order and good government uh, powers? Oh, I see where your question's coming from now. Uh, I don't want to get into all of the details of the legal briefs. Legal briefs will be filed that will be publicly available here in short order once the Court of Appeal establishes its timeline for filing of materials. Uh, I don't want to preempt uh, the hard work that's being done by our legal team on this matter. Uh, there are clear issues that are going to be in the Saskatchewan government obviously doesn't agree with the Court of Appeal decision. They're seeking uh, to go to the Supreme Court on this matter. Uh, there's many legal issues that need to be set. In Alberta, though, we want to make sure we get our full evidentiary record on the record. We want to be able to make sure we make full legal submissions. That's why we're launching our Court of Appeal challenge here in Alberta. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Our next question comes from Tara Weber of BNN Bloomberg. Your line is open. I'm just wondering, since the repeal of the NDP's carbon tax, was, does that weaken your case, essentially, that we're still kind of waiting for a lot of details about how Alberta is moving forward? I think that this strengthens our case. This is a campaign commitment to Albertans to get Bill 1 passed. This is what we campaigned on. This is a clear mandate that we have that we can make a provincial plan here uh, to satisfy our, what our climate obligations would be. This is a made in Alberta solution. <clears throat> We're not going to stop fighting for Alberta jobs. This is what we campaigned on doing. This is a clear commitment from us to stand up for provincial rights, not just for Albertans, but for all Canadians. This is a gross overreach by the federal government that sets a dangerous precedent for the future. Do you have a follow-up, Tara? Yeah, just in follow-up, what would you say to Albertans who say Saskatchewan's already lost a very similar case and this is obviously going to cost the province and is it worth that amount of money? I see. We're going to fight for the future of Alberta. We campaigned on making sure that we fought for every job, for the future opportunities of Albertans, and to control our own destiny within our Constitution. We're going to make sure that we fight for this province to make sure all Albertans know that we've got their back and that we're not going to stop. We're going to use every tool possible supporting other provinces that are standing with us in our coalition to make sure that we get this right for Canada. One more from the phone, then we'll come back. Uh, operator, can you please put through the next caller? Our question comes from Justin... Giovanetti of the Globe and Mail, your line is <laughs> Hi, I'll try again. The second He's time. there. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, the question I was, I was trying to ask earlier, and, and, and it was generally touched on, is it, is there anything unique about Alberta's situation that you think would distinguish it from the case that was already heard in Saskatchewan and the case that uh, has been heard in Ontario? Every province in Canada is unique. Every province has a unique set of circumstances, different population bases, different industries. That's why we need to have provincial solutions to these complex challenges. That's the whole premise of this, is that our Constitution was set up beautifully to allow Alberta to have its constitutional right on these matters so we can have a local solution. Uh, that's why we're going to stand up and defend this province and make sure we put forward our full legal case, our full evidentiary record, and have full legal submissions on this matter. Do you have a follow-up, Justin? Yeah, I, 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 kind of the same question, I guess, kind of the same follow-up as Tyler, which is, um, it, but from a legal standpoint, I mean, we've already seen what at least one of this, pro this country's highest courts has said. Uh, from a legal standpoint, is there something that legally sets the province apart? I think from the, the biggest thing, and this is one of those issues that from my, I'm putting my lawyer hat on here, uh, if facts matter. Uh, facts matter to your case. Uh, right now, we need to make sure we put forward Alberta's full evidentiary record on this matter to make sure that when we go through the court process, people understand the steps that this province is taking, and that is going to be key for us to make our legal argument regarding the constitutional protections that we want for Alberta. Back to the floor. Yeah, how is it going to cost? Oh, sorry. How much is it going to cost? The estimates that we have for it is about three hundred thousand dollars, and we've had, we've retained uh, Peter Gall, who had, who did the current work for us in British Columbia on the court matters that were just being uh, heard out there. 
Michelle? Uh, Minister, can I ask you a question? Uh, my colleague has a question for you uh, on a different matter. Um, the Edmonton Police Chief is planning to unveil a new framework tomorrow regarding the naming of homicide victims. So as Justice Minister and Attorney General of Alberta, I mean, what's your policy on the naming of uh, homicide victims? I mean, I have to, I'd have to talk to them about the nature of the of the of their policy proposal that they're putting forward. Uh, our main focus here is to make sure that all Albertans feel safe in their communities, uh, making sure that we have a framework in place to make sure that uh, the police officers have the tools that they need to do their jobs. Uh, I look forward to having a discussion with them uh, regarding the policy issue uh, and seeing uh, the rationale behind it. But I can't speak to it. This is the first I've heard of that issue. Yeah, but what do you, how do you feel personally? I mean, th there has been an issue in Edmonton, as you know, that uh, the Edmonton Police Service names homicide victims. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. If they don't feel there's an investigative purpose for identifying somebody, they won't identify that person. And I think you're well aware that there is an issue w about that here in the city. So how do you feel as a lawyer about this? You know, I would have to defer, though, to the Edmonton Police regarding their own policies and protocols for investigations that they're undertaking. Uh, I mean, they're independent in how they govern themselves. They have their own protocols that they have there. Uh, my focus is making sure that all Albertans feel safe in their communities, as I mentioned, uh, and also to make sure that uh, we have you know, law-abiding citizens feel safe in their community and making sure that we, our police officers have the resources and tools uh, that they need to do their jobs. When it comes to this uh, court case, it's just kind of interesting. This is coming on the same day that the uh, AUP told me this morning they're taking you guys to court over Bill 9. What's your reaction to that? Right now, I mean, this is the right time for us to launch the our, our right court. Now, the AUP taking you all to court over Bill 9. Yeah, from, our, from my perspective, uh, you know, we put into place the wheels in motion to get our order in council today. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor signed it today. This is the right time for us to launch this, given that the federal government announced last week uh, that they're going to be imposing uh, their carbon out. I don't think you're getting my question. What's your reaction to the fact AUPE is taking you guys to court, no, removed from the carbon tax court case? A lot of court actions happening today, but what do you think about the fact AUPE is taking you all to court over Bill 9? Right now, I mean, with respect to Bill 9, uh, as you've heard many times in the legislature, and I defer to the Minister of Finance regarding further comment on Bill 9, uh, it's an interim measure to, to seek a deferral of an arbitration. Uh, the, the Finance Minister has received uh, legal advice regarding the matter. Uh, we think that it's, it's a proper and appropriate step that we should be taking here that's prudent for all Albertans. Uh, and obviously, I won't want to speculate as to what legal arguments they're going to make without seeing their materials. Uh, but, you know, we believe that this is the right, right step for Alberta. And did you wear earplugs last night? No. <laughs> this is uh, this is dome uh, uh, on that front there. Uh, I will address that. It, uh, it was good humor uh, at the time. Uh, it was a long night last night. I think that they ended up at 7 a.m. Uh, I was on the shift that ended at 1 a.m. Uh, it was in it was in good humor uh, and fun. Some of the uh, I'm not sure if people listen to the the Hansard. I think it will go down as one of the legendary Hansard nights uh, in Alberta. Um, it was uh, long, and some long-winded speeches were made last night, and uh, it was in good humor to keep uh, morale going into the wee hours of the night. Isn't that uh, dangerous, what? though? I mean, there's, there's children that, you know, we'll see that on TV today. Politicians putting um, earplugs in their ears. Is that humorous? Is that a message we want to send to kids? Because you wouldn't want a child doing that when another <coughs> child is presenting in a classroom. This is a little bit of uh, dome, uh, Alberta uh, legislative dome uh, disease, as Ralph Klein used to call it. Uh, it's wee hours of the morning as people are there. They're tired. Uh, they need to keep their, their, their spirits up. Uh, with regards to how children would react, uh, I don't think I would bring my children to watch some of the speeches that are being made right now in our legislature. I wouldn't want my children to question period right now. The conduct of the opposition and some of the comments that they made, one of the members of the NDP compared Bill 9 to slavery. That's completely, no, that's completely, things like that are completely that's inappropriate. That's not what no, happened. he made the comment in, the, in yeah, that. He did, and he apologized for I, it. So he's truly sorry. I should never have done the two things. Also, Ron Orr brought up the fact and drew parallels between communism, the opium wars, and some random thing. And a bunch of UCP members who are now sitting compared the carbon tax to Holodomor. So these are all things that suddenly get said, but it's disingenuous to keep bringing it up when he's apologized for it and he wasn't comparing the two. He just mentioned them both in the same debate. He, had the, he had the opportunity clearly to apologize in question period the other day. He did not. Yeah, at the same time, we ought to make sure that we, we're trying to bring decorum to the legislature. We're trying to bring proper etiquette as in this discourse back and forth. Some of the heckling is very loud. Some of the, some of the issues regarding this, in, in, particularly in the legislature itself, you can, barely, you can barely hear. I had a visitor who had watched Question Period on, on TV before, but the first time that they'd ever come, they watched it in person, and they could barely hear questions being answered. They thought that it was completely unacceptable that we have allowed it to degrade to this point. Okay, last question. 
Is that proper decorum to wear headphones when you're when that's what you guys are saying you're bringing? Uh, it was in, again, as I mentioned earlier on. This is a bit of dome disease that's going on, as Ralph Klein mentioned. Uh, you know, we see this, it was late in the evening. We're trying to make sure you keep morale up. People are sitting through long-winded speeches that sometimes are very, very circular in their arguments. Uh, again, a good humored fun on our side. Thanks very much, guys.